Hello folks, Tufty Indigo here, and on this, the Feast of St. Valentine, I have a very special Forge Lions match for you today. We're doing something a bit different today. Normally, when I cast these games, I have not seen the result before it starts, and I, I do this to make sure that I'm not accidentally giving away any spoilers in my commentary or in my choice of what to show. But today it's a bit different. I have seen the ending, and we'll come to why I'm doing this this way in a moment. I'm going to be going to split screen for almost the whole match here. So we'll see how that works out. Let's quickly look at the map itself. It's a relatively small map. It's a 3v3 ladder game, Neuroxis generated map. There's this water in the middle, which is shallow for most of it, but it will support some naval units. We've got some really far off hydro points. So our mint Alex here. Their, hydro, their nearest hydro is up here, and they've got one on the plateau. There's one here that's kind of in the middle of nowhere. Uh, Shadow Rear has one that's back here, and then another one that's further back. And then Gellan doesn't have one at all. Maybe Gellan's supposed to come and take this one from the other side. So, despite that, we do have a bit of tree claim, which will help the players to get up some energy while they're going out to those hydro points. So, let's look at the players on both sides. On team one, which is the team in the cooler colors, the Chilies, the highest rated player, who is also the highest rated in the game, is Shadow Rhea, who is 1293. And they're playing in the Seraphim. Then Mint Alex is in the further back position at 1172. And they're playing as Aeon. And Gellan, the junior player in the whole game, is playing as Aeon as well. And they're at the bottom here. And you can see Shadowry and Gallon just starting their walk out to the beach. Shadowry has already gone to capture the uh, what looks like an extra starting point at the back here. On the other side, the top rated player is Dyson V12 Vacuum. And you can see their comm is coming up to the beach now as well. And... They've also started coming out to the back to capture the, uh, the the leftover starting point. We also have Brute, who's playing as UEF at 11.13 ELO. And finally, we have RCX Dude, who I'm going to uh, focus on especially. RCX Dude is my husband, and he is the newest player in the game. He's only been playing since June 2023, so not even a year and he says this is the most exciting game he's had so far on the 3v3 ladder. So he suggested this game and I'm going to cast it. So in a way, this is a bit of a nepotism stream, but it's more romantic if we say it's a Valentine's Day special. As you can see, we've already had first blood here in the centre. Mint Alex's scout coming over the water to get mopped up by the scouts from Dyson. Tank coming up now, but there's enough sell-ins here that it shouldn't be a trouble. Now that we see the comms are crossing the water, so we've got two comms from the Toasties coming over to the left and two comms from the Chilies coming over to the right, we're going to go to split screen so that we can see the left and the right side action at the same time. Both teams have started building some naval from Gallon here and from RCX on this side. RCX going straight to two shipyards. You can see RCX's comm also has queued up three land factories on this beachhead. Uh, Shadow is similar. They've queued up four, of which one's already completed. So the, the chilly beachhead is a little more underway. We can also see a bit of early air regression here coming out from Shadow Rear, a T1 bomber, but there is flak, uh, there is, sorry, a, a railgun air defense in brute space, so it is killed for no value. The Eco's pretty even, a six difference. It's still early days in the game, and we'll have to keep an eye on that to see how it progresses. No beachhead yet for Gellan. Gellan's got the comm on this side, but not building anything yet. In fact, just standing there AFK. 
perhaps because uh, Kellen's also been queuing up stuff, but you can see on the mini-map stuff is starting to come across the water from their main base. Also, Mintalix as well, huge incursion up here. This is looking a bit more threatening for Dyson. The, the scouts that were here earlier gone. Dyson's got out a, a T1 bomber as well and is starting to counterattack these. But Mintalix doing some really good early aggression here. Uh, however, it looks like Mintalix is going to have to keep their units on their side of the map. They're also bringing their comm up to counter. As the beachhead on this side is looking a bit more dangerous now. With two land factories already from Dyson. And the second one coming up here for RCX, dude. More engineers coming in for RCX as well. And we have some comm on comm action here. Meanwhile, on this side, it's Brutecon who looks a bit under threat as Shadow Rear's units are pushing up to Brute's early forward factory. Brute seems to be caught in the middle of an upgrade. We don't have the upgrade text, uh, but I would guess that they're getting calm. They're rooted to the spot, but it's nearly finished. They're going to get out before they lose too much health to this. On the left side, the comms have got out of range of each other now. Both still in the green, but with about 20% taken off their damage there, uh, off their health there. And Mintalix is starting to look a bit out of position as Dyson separated them from their units and Dyson has more reinforcements on the way in. But uh, Dyson's also walked their comm back a bit as they got into the yellow. And RCX now coming into support, but naked without any units to back up. And on the right side, Brute's actually looking in a bit of danger. There are bombers coming down from Dyson to support. And if you, if you see on the whole, across the whole map, Dyson has a lot of T1 factories and they're churning out units, but they're not going left to support Dyson. They're going south here to support Brute. On the left side, it's two comms versus a whole lot of spam and one comm. And Dyson really deep into the yellow here, less than half health. However, the situation looks to be stabilizing for them. Mintalix has, has been pushed into the yellow and is stopping their regression. Also, RCX dude's first frigate has come up and is guarding the shoreline here, while Gellan has a frigate and a submarine on right side that are guarding against any comms that want to come into the water. But Brute here, we've just seen, has been defeated. Huge overextension there. And Dyson was pushing the T1 units in, but not that able to get that back enough. But it does look like that they're early enough to be able to kill off Shadow Rear. Shadow Rear has a lot of units in the area, but they're just not getting through the artillery here from Dyson fast enough. And Shadow Rear is calm in a lot of trouble. He's dancing. There's also T1 bombers. It looks like they're going to finish the job. 700, 500 health. Inti's coming in to counter the bombers, but not enough down to 25 health with that pass and this one surely yes this one clears up shadow rear's calm so we've had one elimination on either side of the game now and this situation at the bottom side of the map is looking very dangerous for the right side as they've lost all of this territory while on the oh you can't quite see because of the mini map but on the left side the toasties have pretty much returned the favor by taking the mass points on this peninsula. Still one left there for Min's Alex though. So we still have 2v1 in this area in terms of comms, but Galen is looking pretty uh, unmolested down here as both of the toasty comms are on the left side. Still a lot of units streaming out of Dyson's main base, but now they were going to attack Gellan back in their starting position. But it looks like they're being redirected to, to try and attack uh, Mintalex's beachhead. However, it's all happening on the left side now. RCX perhaps overextending a little here has been caught out of position, is being forced back, but the spam has caught up with them. And now it's Mint Alex who's looking in trouble. They've been separated from their units. They're trying to walk back to their point defense here. RCX is focusing the comm hard. Uh, also with their own comm, which does have the, uh, the gun upgrade. Mint Alex has two levels of upgrade though. And 
Polishex is not going to be able to stay here too long. They're really eating into their com health to be able to, to put in this damage. And Mintalix is now looking fairly safe as OCX has had to stop focusing and pull back. OCX now into the red, 2400 health, 2300. And now both of the Toasty Coms having to fall back as their supply of reinforcements has been exhausted. Mintalix obviously feels a bit safer now as they've started the shield upgrade. It's not going to take very... Oh, well, it is going to take very long. The ETAs just uh, hugely increased there as they uh, must be a bit short on resources. It's going to take them a minute and they will be stuck to the spot during that time. Meanwhile, on the right side, Gellin's pushed out a bit, does now have a factory. However, Mint Alex's factories have mostly been eliminated by Dyson's incoming T1 spam. And Gellin now pushing up forward towards Dyson's base, and Dyson looks like they could be in trouble here, uh, though some bad unit pathing is catching Gellin out here. It means that a lot of their units are going to be caught here by Dyson's reinforcements that are coming in from the left as they attempt to come round the cliff here. However, still enough at the front line to really threaten Dyson, whose engineers are spamming up point defenses. Are they going to be fast enough? They, they do seem to be eliminating Gellin's units as they stream in. Uh, perhaps a, a better coordinated assault there might have achieved more. And it does look like Dyson has now some time to, to uh, yeah, especially with the spamming of T1 point defenses now, they have enough time to reinforce here and push Gellin back a bit. Uh, Gellin now also looking a little bit separated from their reinforcements there. However, this is not enough to threaten the calm on its own. And if we look at left side, the Navy has increased a bit. RCX dude now bringing a destroyer to the front line and has a few a few subs to guard against comms going under the water. Whereas the left side Navy hasn't really grown anymore. It's one destroyer, two frigates. I uh, have more, more factories going up there. However, while we've been talking about that, some Janus's are now coming in for Dyson and Gellin has been caught well away from their ground-based air defense. Uh, they've got Inti's now coming in to try and defend. Gellin is dancing, but uh, has already lost about a third of their health there and the bombs keep dropping. The Kong just can't dance fast enough. Uh, also being chased by some more Zuri's. They've not quite caught up yet, but these Janus's are doing a number and it's it's down to 50% health for Gellin. The Inties are just not cleaning up the T2 Janus's fast enough. And Min Alex has also sent some of their own uh, Inties into support. Meanwhile, on the left side, also Mint Alex doing a huge push forwards. The, they've got shield now on their comm. That upgrade completed. They're still only on about 50% health, but they're looking completely unthreatened here. Lots of reinforcements around them. RCX dude pushing in. And it's RCX who's perhaps looking in more danger here. They do have stealth though. That's going to help them out. They have not yet broken through the shield of Mintalix. Gellin's managed to fall back from Janus's, but is on less than... 300 health and his eye on less than zero health as one last Janus pass finishes off Gellin's calm. And so now Mint Alex, who's currently in combat and is under destroyer fire from RCX, is the last surviving ACU on Team Chili. RCX backing their come up here. They're under a lot of danger, less than half health. But those Janus's that just finished off Gellin have been brought to the left and one pass is enough to finish off Mint Alex, putting in the last of the damage there and winning the game for the Toasty team. So, exciting game there. Really all happens at T1, though those Janus's at T2 really being the clincher there, finishing off two enemy cons.
Uh, oh, and of course the Destroyer is T2. Uh, I'm really responsible for laying a lot of damage in to Mint Alex there at the end. So non-stop action today. I think RCX was justified in saying this is the most exciting game he's played. Do you think he's justified? If you have a game of your own that you would like casted, join the Forge Lines Forever Discord. There is a replays to cast channel. Post your replay ID there and probably someone will look at it. If not me, then one of the other casters. We have a really strong casting community for Forge Lines. And on that subject, make sure you like every YouTube video you see about Forge Alliance. If you want the community to grow, if you want to see more great games like this, if you want shorter queue times in the ladder, the way to do that is to have more people find out about Forge Alliance. And the easiest way to have more people find out is with YouTube videos. Every time you like one of these YouTube videos, it means that YouTube will decide to show that to more people, more people who are into RDS games, more people who could start playing Forge Alliance. If you enjoyed this and you think this is a game you'd like to play, stop, run, straight to faforever.com. FA Forever is a free download. You do have to buy the original Forge Alliance game to play it, but it's only a couple of quid, dollars, euros, whatever on Steam. FAForever.com will tell you exactly how you can get into the game. Finally, I just want to say thank you for watching. Thank you for liking, supporting the community. This has been Forge Alliance Forever. I've been to Team Tiger. Toodlepip.